Hey there, good evening, it's Lana. And last night I wanted to do this video, but I got tired a little bit sooner than later. And so before I go to sleep tonight, I want to put the question out there. If you're aware of where your single-minded focus actually is. So when we bring up the idea of single-minded focus, it's a question of where is your mind constantly running? Do you find there's a single thought that changes form, maybe has a different essence, but it's ultimately the same? That it has the same pattern going on and on and on? Because a lot of times we're playing this program and sometimes it's subtly in the background of our mindset. We don't even realize what it's doing is dictating every experience that we're creating externally to us in our world. And that our single-minded focus can be right there out at the forefront. You can see it, you can touch it, you can taste it, you can feel it. And other times you're going, I just don't understand why this keeps on happening. Because it's so far back in the deep archives, it's running the show. So it just depends on what kind of operating system you're working on. Are you running on the old program? Or have you upgraded to a new one? This is just something for you to consider because as deep as this is about to go, and I like to say we're going bulldozer deep here, most people are not going to want to take on the hmm, personal responsibility that's involved with the program that's running your life. And that is your mind. Whether or not the mind is a strong ego of always wanting to be right versus seeking the method of finding happiness and joy in, the, in, in what's going on around them. It's really easy to find the worst stuff out there, especially if you immerse yourself in an environment that cultivates the negative mindset, that cultivates, oh, whoa, look at the world, it's suffering, this, all this stuff is going on around me. But it's just as equally easy to go out and find everything beautiful and positive in life. It's not Pollyanna-like. What it is, is finding the joy. Finding what resonates and makes your heart sing and soul soar, right? A lot of people are actually afraid to be truly happy because they're worried about how their people are going to look at them and perceive them and treat them. Especially if you found yourself around people who will question why you're so happy. How can you be so happy when there are starving children in Africa? I think I heard that all my life. You can't sit here and not be appreciative of your food because of what's going on out there. Well, you should appreciate everything because when you appreciate it, you get more of it in, in exponential growth. Where your attention goes, the energy flows. This is how we create our reality. It's not Murphy's Law who has become the scapegoat for so many. It's not, oh, woe is me, I'm the victim of every circumstance in my life. But the reality is, we rarely connect to what's going on in our mind, what's constantly running through, that is actually attracting and drawing to us every experience in the life. So how is your life going? Are you in a mindful set where you can see the, the words coming through and you can stop them? Or do you just keep running through life and just saying, this is happening to me, that's happening to me, but never stopping to pause and seeing why or how you are a direct creator. You're the one impacting each moment after moment. Nobody does anything to us because ultimately nobody can do anything to us that we're not already doing to ourselves. Everything starts with self. When you go outside, you go without. When you go inside, you have everything you need. Nobody can take what's inside of you away from you. Only you can give that power away. And the only time you give that power away is when you actually step outside of yourself 
and you place it out there and say, well, I have no control over that. But why would you? Because when you take control, personal accountability, vulnerability, courage, to step into your own power of how you are your creator of your experiences and that you can choose joy over despair. Why would you want to go outside of yourself? Why would you want to give your power away to somebody else? This takes constant training and attention, mindfulness, practice, reprogramming. It doesn't happen overnight. Ask me because I know from my personal experience. When I came from a victim stance, let me tell you, I could attract to me an attack that would give me a reason to defend myself. Boy, did I feel like everything was happening to me. But in the reality, in the grand scheme of things, stepping back, looking back, seeing myself where I was, I was so strong in that vibration. I, it didn't matter whether it was justified, and I could find plenty of people who would validate me in my victim mentality and that oh woe is me yeah you're right that's not that's not right that shouldn't happen to you but you know what talk is cheap let's take action because we all know words don't do anything to make a change unless you're sitting there having a conversation on let's find a solution stop with the stories stop looking for the injustices because extreme is extreme and again Yes, it's very true, Susan. You attract what you are, not what you want. You attract where you're at in your vibration. The deepest things you fear will be easily those that you draw toward you just as much. So if you can just shift it more and focus more on what it is you want to experience and achieve in life, you're going to find the more you lean toward the positive, the more you're going to experience it. And it's not going to happen overnight, but it takes constant practice. And admitting and knowing and owning for you doesn't matter. You don't have to validate it through anybody else because nobody else is going to tell you what your truth is. We tend to want to connect with one another. We want to find that common accord. Sometimes we want that common discord. But the reality is, if I'm not in joy and you're not in joy, how are we contributing to the world at large? Because when we work on ourselves and we find the peace and the joy within, that radiates out. That helps other people. That's not selfish. That's selfless. The selfishness is when you dislike where you're at and you expect everyone to join your pity party. That's not helping or serving anyone. The, the happier you are, the more you're in your joy, you're going to uplift other people, even if you don't see it, because somebody is touched by it. And if we all worked on where we're at, and we all sought the happiness that we all deserve for ourselves, and not trying to fix someone else, because that's not our job, you'd be surprised. This world would change on a dime. We wouldn't be in this state of discord that we're in. Because all this chaos that's going on in the world, ultimately, it's a shadow side of me. It's a sh shadow side of you. It's a shadow side of every single one of us, even the stuff we dislike. It's bringing up our crap. The whole world is in a state, a really deep state of healing. Because if we weren't having issues below the surface, none of this would be going on external to us. So we all contributed to what's going on in the world. But when we step back and we block out the influence of the negative stuff going on out there, because it's not going to serve us and uplift us in our lives, and we work on making our personal lives better right here, right now, all of that will shift too. But it takes each single one of us individually to take our own personal responsibility and work on 
ourselves first. Because once we've done that, it's that ripple effect out. Find yourself a community of people that support you, people who uplift you, people who are willing to keep you in your joy. Not the ones that are going to drag you down. Not the crabs in the, the boiling pot of water. Because you want to be the change in the world, you have to recognize that we are the ones we've been waiting for. But it only starts from within. And it only starts with you. And it only starts with me. Because I, don't, I have no responsibility nor control over what someone else does. So where is your single focus? Where is your single-minded focus? Do you know what your operating system is running? Are you able to stop, stop, drop, and roll? Check in with yourself from time to time. If you are re-experiencing the same thing over and over again, there's something wrong with the operating system. You gotta work on the mindfulness. Pay attention to the single-minded focus that's going on in your life. Because when you can shift that from the what you don't want to what you do want, your life is going to change in miraculous ways. So have a wonderful Saturday evening. Many blessings, love and light to all of you. And if you have any comments, questions, share my video. And I hope this helps in your own personal evolution. Good night.